Hey what's up guys, my name is Achano, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking all about Unreal Engine 4 and Visual Assist, a match made in heaven. So I know that on this channel we haven't really talked about large projects very often, Unreal Engine 4 being a great example of a very large C++ project. And on the other hand, I have mentioned just how much I love Visual Assist and how I've been using it for like literally 90% of my C++ development that I've done in my whole life. I've also made a video showing my favorite features of Visual Assist. And so I thought for this video I would partner with Visual Assist to show you guys some of the amazing Unreal Engine 4 specific features that Visual Assist actually has, as well as how Visual Assist can actually help you deal with really large projects. Now I want to start off by saying that if you are writing C++ code inside Visual Studio, Visual Assist is an absolute must-have as far as I'm concerned. Yes, it is true that Visual Studio has of course improved throughout the years, but in my experience it's still not just up to the level of features that Visual Assist actually provides you with. And if you're dealing with large solutions like we're going to be looking at today, it can actually offer some serious benefits. The first real thing that I want to mention is just performance. When you're dealing with a large code base, things can get extremely slow. I find myself fighting the tools I'm actually working with constantly. I mean, back when I worked at EA on Frostbite, that was a fantastic example. That solution is absolutely massive, and there were just so many Visual Studio features that I found that I had to disable because it was just taking too long to just like display syntax highlighting or open a file, stuff like that. One of the biggest culprits of this is something called IntelliSense. IntelliSense is something that's built into Visual Studio that basically parses all the code to figure out things like autocomplete, you know, the little squiggly errors that come up, as well as syntax highlighting, which of course is very important. Now anyone that has worked on a giant solution in Visual Studio knows that one of the first things you want to do is just disable IntelliSense. Because if you leave that bad boy on, it's not, it's not gonna be a good time. However, when you disable IntelliSense, you lose so much. But that's where Visual Assist can come in and really make life easier for you. Because not only does Visual Assist actually have their own parsing and syntax highlighting and all of that, that an amazing engine that deals with all of that stuff, it's also better than the default Visual Studio one. They have this thing called Enhanced Syntax Highlighting, which just makes everything look really pretty, and it, it can actually parse symbols a lot deeper than what Visual Studio can do natively. So for something like Unreal Engine 4, I mean, whether you're actually working on the code base or an actual game built using Unreal Engine 4, we'll get into that a little bit later, but I, for one, I'm building my own game engine called Hazel, so it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty common that I will go through other engines, especially something like Unreal Engine 4, whose source code is freely accessible and actually see how they're doing things and just see the general architecture of their engine. When I'm going through all of their engine code, I want to be able to do that efficiently and quickly. Obviously, I don't want Visual Studio just slowing everything down. So one of the ways that I do that is I disable IntelliSense for the Unreal Engine 4 solution and I just use Visual Assist. And to be honest, I, I, I don't even miss IntelliSense whatsoever. I mean, I remember working back on Frostbite and literally one of the first things in the documentation, once you check out that engine and you finally have it on your computer, like a day or two later, it literally says disable IntelliSense. Like this is such a big problem for all of these large solutions and I, I just, I wouldn't dream of trying to go through something like that without Visual Assist. Now for anyone who has actually gone through Unreal Engine 4 source code, you'll note that there are so many language extensions and various macros that they actually use because they have their own parses as well, which reflect things in the editor and all of that kind of fun stuff. And in fact, it doesn't you don't even have to look through Unreal Engine 4's source code. This is also something you'll encounter all the time if you're actually just trying to build a game using Unreal Engine and if you're specifically writing like scripts in C++. They basically have these like macro starting with you, so like you class, you function, that kind of stuff, which their own tools will then later parse. Now, because of these extra language extensions, Visual Studio and its parser tends to get extremely confused, specifically the formatter as well, and it starts to misalign things all the time. I personally hate that, but that's one of the benefits of using a tool that's actually aware of all of these language extensions and extra syntax like Visual Assist. Because it's been developed specifically with Unreal Engine 4 in mind, I mean, it literally has an Unreal Engine 4 mode that you can enable, it actually fixes all of that. And whilst fixing things like indentation and tabs, which Visual Assist does, is 
It, I mean, it's really annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Visual Assist actually understands the structure of Unreal Engine a lot more than just indentation and tabs. For example, when you're trying to navigate through certain new functions which may have validation enabled, these kind of underscore implementation, underscore validate methods, since Visual Assist is aware of that, when you press Alt G, for example, to actually go to a particular function definition, it pops up for you because it knows what that is. But of course, the coolest thing is that because Visual Assist's like parsing engine is actually aware of all of this fancy Unreal Engine 4 stuff, it means that all of Visual Assist's tools actually work with these things. So if you're trying to refactor something, if you're trying to implement a virtual function, things like autocomplete, they, they work. Something as simple as properly parsing all of this Unreal Engine 4 code. And I'm not, of course, I'm not just talking about the engine source code. I'm talking about the actual game that you're making in Unreal Engine 4. All of that code that uses Unreal Engine 4's features, being able to actually parse all of that code properly to provide you with a better development experience is something that Visual Assist does very well. Whereas IntelliSense gets confused a lot of the time and actually underlines certain things as errors when they're not because it has no idea what's going on. So if you're working on a project with Unreal Engine 4 or you're actually extending the source code maybe or browsing the engine source code, I highly recommend you take a look at Visual Assist. I'll leave a link in the description below to both an article that covers some of the other features that Visual Assist offers for Unreal Engine 4, which I didn't get to in this video, as well as a link to Visual Assist itself along with a 30-day free trial that you can check out. And as always, I highly recommend that you guys check out Visual Assist, even if you're not working with Unreal Engine 4. C++ in Visual Studio needs Visual Assist. That's been my belief for like over five years, and it's definitely the first thing I install when I install Visual Studio. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it was helpful to you. Definitely let me know if you do try this out and if you have been using Visual Assist with Unreal Engine and how you've been finding it. Don't forget to hit the like button, of course, if you did enjoy the video, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.